talk a little bit about that. How did you create a life that you could sit here and say that? To tell you the truth, I didn't really create it. I mean, I, I, when people say, what did you do to make it happen? What did you do? Who did you talk to? Who did you meet? I, I, there wasn't anybody. I mean, the only two people that I could say uh, were responsible for me being able to have the singing career that I had was Rogers and Hammerstein because I was on my way to college to become a veterinarian. I didn't care about singing. I could sing, I thought everybody could sing. It was a natural, natural talent for me. I was the youngest member of the church choir at age six, you know, mm -hmm. in my little town of Smithton, Pennsylvania. And I loved it and I performed in high school and did all of that, but I thought everybody could do that. And I wanted to be a vet because I was an only child and I raised everything from, you know, skunks to birds to snakes to you name it. You know, I, I, it was the love of my life. But I was on my way to college to do that and stopped off in New York City with my parents, which was a summer holiday. And I knew a pianist that I'd worked with in Pittsburgh and I called him and he said, come on up, we'll sing a couple of tunes. And he said, listen, Rogers and Hammerstein's having open auditions for anybody that wants to sing for them. They had three shows running on Broadway at that time. What was your age at this and time? I was 18. And their shows ran so long, they had to keep replacing chorus people every couple of weeks, you know. Now, I barely knew who they were. You know, I remembered seeing Oklahoma at the big th one big theater in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and loved the show, you know. But I wasn't sure who they were. I was very young and wasn't into that quite yet. And I said, oh, I, I, I couldn't do that. I've never saw it. And they said, he said, come on. Anyway, I waited in line with everybody else, got up and sang for the casting director. And he said, Miss Jones, what have you done? And I said, nothing. <laughs> he said, could you wait a few moments? Mr. Rogers happens to be across the street rehearsing his orchestra for Oklahoma, which was about to open at City Center and go out on another tour. And I said, well, I guess so, you know. I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't sure what I was doing and why I was there. Well, I sang for him and he said, could you wait? <clears throat> I'm gonna call Oscar Hammerstein at home, <clears throat> excuse me and have him come and hear you. I said, well, I guess so. And my pianist said, Shirley, I hate to do this to you, but I have an airplane to catch. It was some sort of holiday weekend. And he said, I can't stay. And Roger said, never mind, we'll think of something. Well, I waited for about a half hour and down the aisle comes this tall gentleman and he said, Miss Jones, do you know the score of Oklahoma? I said, well, um, I might know some of the music, but I don't know the words. And of course, I'm talking to the lyricist, you understand? Mm -hmm. And he said, never mind, I happen to have a score here. I said, but Mr. Hammerstein, I have no one to play. My pianist had to leave. And Rogers said, we have the full city center symphony across the street. Now, I'd never heard a symphony, seen a symphony, let alone sing with one. They took me across the street. I held the score in front of my face. And I sang, oh, what a beautiful morning, Oklahoma. And people will say we're in love with the City Center Symphony. And three weeks later, I was in my first Broadway show, South Pacific. 